What does it mean to fear God? I'm your host, Reverend Bertram Ginyu, Senior Pastor of Eternal Life Ministry. It's a very important subject, important of old, important of now, important for the future. And there is a song that used to sing, give me that old time religion, give me that old time religion, give me that old time religion, it's good enough for me. Everything that centers around that song concerns the fear of God. What does it mean to fear God? Because many people think the fear of God has to do with keeping the do's and don'ts, the dogmatic life of Christianity. That thing that makes Christianity seem to be difficult. But when I read in Psalm 119, verse 11, David says, let's read from verse 10, With my whole heart have I sought thee, Oh, let me not wander from thy commandments. Oh, let me not wander from thy commandments. My rationale for sharing this subject is something I found in Psalm 132. Whenever a village wants to preserve a generation or a people want to preserve a generation after them they bring in what they call in our African context or Cameroon context country fashion and they seem to be do's and don'ts that help guide the younger ones the younger generation they are trained on the ethics and the values that preserve them and now in sociology and anthropology, we talk about cultural values and, and all of that which concerns that. And also, many of our villages, there is what they call rights, cultural rights. And sometimes we have to the effect of deities. There is a certain allegiance that is paid to deities to maintain their, their, their spiritual health and their social preservation within the society. And we find here in Psalm 119 from verse 10 it says, With my whole heart have I sought thee, O let me not wander from thy commandments. In verse 11 of Psalm 119, David says, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. I was talking about country fashion and I was talking about allegiance to deity when we look at retaining the sanity of our society. The fear of deity, the fear of elders, in this context, respect, and the fear of the tradition in the context, respect of tradition. In a nation, the fear of the law, that is respect for the laws of the state, is what guarantees the success of the state if the state has healthy laws. The Senate has the power to point which law is not healthy. But when we live in a government system an economic system that is designed by God. Who can advise God? Can you advise God? He knows what I need. He knows what I needed and can tell me where I've made mistakes. And he knows what I will need and what my children will need. That's why a man of God, true man of God, a man of God is the best source of counselor a nation, a people can ever have. I won't go to the extent of quoting history because it's not a subject of focus. I may lose the weight. I want to focus on you 
in particular as a person. I want to release the understanding of the fear of God. I've mentioned about a village society. I've mentioned about a national system where there are state laws, the respect for state laws. Now, I want to talk about the fear of God to you from every scope of life. Because the laws of the state affect every activity of the state. In Cameroon, we have the legislative, administrative, and judiciary systems, which the law should affect. And David is saying in Psalm 119, verse 10, With my whole heart have I sought thee. Oh, let me not wander from thy commandments. If we take it into the, 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 the legislative system, let's look at a lawyer. A lawyer, as far as the judiciary system is concerned, a judge who desires to be a good judge hides the constitution in their heart, not on the paper. They know the constitution at heart. Because they want to maintain the sanity of the state and of the people. And any judge that's, that knows this justice sometimes always comes under very strong attacks from usurping presidents or officials that are trying to usurp power. They try to silence them. And now we are finding David here who is the king of Israel, a presiding judge over the people. We are finding David here who is a priest. We are finding David who is a prophet. Saying, with my whole heart have I sought thee, O let me not wander from thy commandments. David starts by himself. David doesn't deal with God from the perspective of God being God. And just relating with God so that he can administrate the people as a king. David deals with God on the base of him and God. And in verse 11, he said, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. In verse 12, he said, Blessed art thou, O Lord, teach me thy statutes. Have you hid God in your heart? Have you hid the word of God in your heart? We live in a time when it is increasingly seen. The majority of Christians, as it seems to have always been, as Sunday Christians, they are churchgoers. We live in a time when the majority of those who claim to be serious Christians cannot even master quotations of scripture word for word at heart. Ah. And I want to tell you, when storms in life come, when troubling times come, when testing moments come, when you don't have any power of your own, it is the word of God that you hide in your heart that speaks for you in those moments. It is the word of God that is hidden within your system that begins to speak for you. The spirit of God given to us can't be manifested to the fool without the foundation of the word of God. The power of God made available to the believer cannot be manifested to the fool without the hiding of the word of God in your heart. What does it mean to hide the word in your heart? It means you hold the word of God in your heart to the extent that you can remember it during hard times. When your own judgment is impaired and you can't speak or you can't talk as you should, the word of God from your heart begins to well up once again. So, if I should define the fear of God to you, I will tell you, the fear of God means hearing God's instructions and obeying, seeing his directions and following with all joy and pleasure in your heart. Remember I said joy and pleasure. David said, Thine commands have I hid in my heart. I love it. 
You know, I shared a long time ago about the love of God and our love for God. David was a man after God's heart, a lover of God. And I'm about to show you this when we will be reading Psalm 132. About the love of God being, hearing God's instructions and obeying, seeing his directions and following with joy and pleasure in heart. I want to show you that without joy and pleasure in heart, hearing God's instructions and obeying, seeing his directions and following is not working according to the fear of God. And Apostle Paul speaks sometime in the New Testament and says, God loves a cheerful giver. Whosoever gives grudgingly receives no reward. It is the love of God that makes you fear God. And the love of God is not a feeling for God, but it's a response of your heart, your whole being to God. Whatever you want to do in life, it's, if it's a business, it comes with the pangs and pains of the business. Whatever profession you choose in life comes with its hardships. Life as long as decay remains, as long as fruit time, seed time, and harvest time remains on the earth, life will always have pain along with it. A man's love for his job teaches him to be patient with the pain that go with the job. What more of your love for God which will teach you to be patient with the pains of Christendom. Because many people lose the fear of God because of some excruciation that occurs within your heart about some expectation or some anticipation. Excruciating pain of what you expect that doesn't manifest. If the fear of God remains in your heart, Walking along with God is nothing that has to do with fanatism. The love of God is interpreted sometimes to an extent as foolishness. When you love God, you seem to be a foolish man. And so Apostle Paul says, the wisdom of God is foolishness to them that perish. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The wisdom from God. And this wisdom from God is foolishness to them that perish. So when you fear God, there is an extent of the oppression of the fear of God that makes you look foolish before your peers. I can imagine a professor who has found the love of God, very rich, very loaded, Money and with connections. He's a big man. And this professor can hear the voice of God. And this professor finds himself by the direction of God to join a small church fellowship. Let's say a group of nine persons worshipping in what they call small church. And how foolish people of our time, they mock it and they call it backside church in pidgin language. What will the colleagues of this professor say to him when they find him in such assembly? They will look at him as a frustrated man. They will look at him as a stupid man. They will look at him as a foolish man. The worst of it all is when a believer who is of high standard and of high legal status or social status find himself in the scenario where there is the necessity to pray in tongues and to speak in tongues amidst the officials where he finds himself and amongst people who do not know God. There is freedom of speech. There is freedom of worship. There is freedom of this. But how many of Christians that are believers feel the urge and the need to boast in tongues? Even when we, they are at the work side and, and they burst in tongues and begin to pray. And if I should use the examples, Muslims pray everywhere. They find themselves. And we are adapted. When I talk about the fear of God and your environment, 
Hearing God's instructions and obeying, seeing his directions and following. And I said, the fear of the Lord is foolishness to them that perish. When you walk in obedience to the voice of God, men who do not understand who you are, what you are, who do not know or who do not even love the God whom you serve, they see you as a foolish person sometimes and most times until when the power of God begins to manifest in your life for them or in their lives because of you. I have seen it. I have tasted and experienced it firsthand. But I will turn back in Solomon says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. If we turn to Ecclesiastes, even chapter 9, we'll find it. You are foolish and dull in your heart until when you begin to fear God. Hearing God's instructions and obeying, seeing his directions and following with joy and pleasure in your heart, no matter the pains that is involved in it. A woman in labor goes through labor pangs, labor pains. But the end point of the labor is that a child comes forth and it's joy. But there is pain. The early disciples of Jesus Christ, the early apostles, he said when they had called them and reprimanded them not to preach or to teach in the name of Jesus, and they rejected and refuted the authorities and said, who do we obey, you or God? Now it says they were flogged and released. And when they were released, they were rejoicing and happy that they had been beaten for the sake of the gospel. And I asked myself, how did Jesus brainwash these men to rejoice after being beaten? And then I understand that when the spirit of God, not the words of men, when the spirit of God takes over your heart, when the love of God dawns on you, your love for God endures every suffering that can ever be present. Endures every feeling of frustration that can ever be there. And I look at it before Jesus came. There is the usual story of the three Hebrew boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. That was the Babylonian name given to them. He said, Nebuchadnezzar had instituted the worship of a one God system, a one religious system. And that God's name was Baal. And says, give the signal that that Baal should be worshipped. And these boys refused to bow down to Baal. The government has passed a law, and these boys refused to bow down to the law. They refused to submit themselves to the religious law. And when they asked them, they said it is forbidden because this God is not the God that is prescribed by the judge of all the earth, by the one who rules in the kingdoms of men and gives power to whomsoever he wills. They rejected and they refuted because the senior authority of the religious system of the world says he is the only God. And this guy say to Nebuchadnezzar, Oh king, let it be made known to you, we have a God who can save us. This God who is the God of the world, the, the, the God of, of, of the living, this God who is Lord of hosts, who is king over all the earth, by whom everything was created. This is the God whom we serve. This is the God whom we know. We don't know Baal. And we are not going to bow down to Baal. Even if this God does not come to save us. And you want to throw us into the fire. We will not bow. King, let it be made known to you. We will not bow. Kill us. We will not bow. And I ask myself. What made these Hebrew boys decide to be better burnt in the fire. Than to bow down to Baal. It was just a small thing. Bow down. Bow down. It's a small thing. Bow down. There was the fear of God in their hearts. And if you think or if, if you can think opposite that those who fear God are fearing God because they are brainwashed by their pastors, they are brainwashed by their spiritual rulers, who brainwashed Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Ah, hallelujah. The fear of God, if it is a brainwashing from the spirit of God, then I need much to be brainwashed by this God. Because if God doesn't brainwash you, you will worship yourself. If you don't allow God to brainwash you, the devil will brainwash you. The world system will brainwash you. Your, 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 your academic 
position will brainwash you. Your, your financial level, the challenges, the experiences of life will brainwash you. But all of these things that we see, they are just a shadow. The things that happen to us in life, they are realities. But there is another dimension of life. It's called a true reality. True reality is how God sees things. And the fear of God drives you out of reality into true reality. That is why when you are sick, the word of God says, let the sick say I'm healed. So it, in the reality you are sick. But the true reality is that there is health beyond the sickness. And you begin to confess true reality. It doesn't sound good in your head. Your feeling doesn't say the same. The doctor's report doesn't say the same. And somebody will tell you, leave that one at it. In Fijian language. And it sounds foolishness. We know that is a lot of dynamic. There's a lot of dynamics in the aspect of healing. But I want to tell you, the life and the fear of God helps you to walk in true reality. So I've explained to you what the fear of God means. Hearing God's instructions and obeying, seeing his directions and following, with all joy and pleasure in heart, the, the routine or the rationale or what should drive your fear is your joy of serving God. The pleasure of working with God and working for God and living for God and living in God and living with God. The pleasure. Have you lost the fear of God because of some tragic things that happened to you? Today is your day of restoration. Have you lost the fear of God because of the harshness of life? This is a moment to think again and turn back. I've quoted to you from the Old Testament. I've quoted to you from the New Testament men who feared God. Men who give themselves to be burnt because God's love dawned on their heart. What is in this world that should keep you from the love of God? John says, Apostle John says, Brethren, the world is passing away and the lost in it. Let us not love this world or anything that is in the world. It's only the love of the world and the distractions in the world that would make you not to fear God. If we look at 1 John chapter 5 from verse 20, it says, Verse 19, and we know that we are of God and the whole world lies in wickedness. Another version says, under the sway of the evil one. If you don't obey God, you will obey yourself. And when you start obeying yourself, you will obey the devil. The systems of the world, outside the perspective of God, civilization of men, Outside the fear of God will only lead to the doom of mankind. For it is God and God's word that holds the cosmos in place. Psalm 82 from verse 4 to verse 6 explains. John says, and we know that the son of God is come and has given us an understanding a dianoia, an imagination, a thought system, a thinking pattern, a heart, a sense that is beyond the physical. That we may know him that is true, not with the head. This knowledge of God is an encounter, it's a touch with the spirit of God. We may know him that is true, and we are in him that is true, even in his son Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. And in verse 21, it says, little children, keep yourselves from idols. What are idols? Anything, any activity that will take the place, do God in your life. Business. When business becomes an idol, it causes you to lose the fear of God. You would hear God's instructions. You can't follow fully. You would hear divine directions. You can't even follow fully. Something is eating you up. David said, I have hid your word in my heart that I might not sin. Is it that you will never, ever sin because you have hid God's word in your heart? That is very difficult to say yes. Because they say to err is human, to forgive is divine. Well, I'm not saying the same. 
But I'm saying because of the tendencies and the passions we have, at points in time we can falter, at points in time we can fail. But the grace of God is ever present to keep you going forward. David who said he's, he will hide, hide the word of God in his heart that he might not sin, stumbled many times, but I'm going to show you something in Psalm 132 and this is where we ride on. I want to show you, like I've spoken, the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. Wisdom not of the world. In the world system, you are wise when you walk according to the rudiments of this world. But I remember Apostle Paul was talking to the Romans before Christianity took over the Roman system, the Roman government. And then we have too many changes that we can account in history. He says, I beseech you by the mercies of God to present your bodies as living sacrifices unto God, for this is a reasonable worship. Do not be conformed to this world. Do not be wise according to this world. Don't be successful by the world system. Don't prosper, but by the world system of prosperity. But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Let your mind be different. Come to God's perspective about life. God's perspective about knowledge. God's perspective about civilization. God's perspective about prosperity. God's perspective about success. Come to this perspective. Be it transformed by the renewing of your mind. When this happens, you will prove what is the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God in the midst of a perverse generation. You can't prove it until you are hearing God's instructions and obeying, seeing his directions and following. Jesus said something, both for those doing ministry uh, on the pulpit and those who have to do ministry from the pew. He said, many will say to me, did I not do this, do that, do that in your name? And I will say to them, get away from me. I know you not, you workers of iniquity. And he says in Matthew chapter 7 from verse 13 right on to verse 14, he said, not all who call Lord, Lord shall enter. That is, sorry, from verse 22. Not all who call Lord, Lord shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, for, but them that do the will of my Father. And he says in verse 13, Broad is the way to hell and to destruction, and many go by it, but narrow is the way to life, and only a few find it. And I've preached this over and over on TV. If you want to find the previous things I've talked on, you can log on to elminsrelations.org or cmtvplus.com. Or as well, you can always text me to send you the previous broadcast. Hallelujah. I'm praying with you and I'm praying for you. Wherever your heart is failing because of difficulties you have encountered, it seems difficult to serve God because of a lot of misrepresentation that is happening even in the church. Who we preach in Christ is Christ. And all we are doing is working with him to manifest more his life and how he wants us to live. Jesus is this message. And Jesus is whom I'm communicating to you. We owe our lives to the message we preach. We owe our expressions, behaviors, and everything about us in the message of Christianity. But then when you find someone faltering, should it cause you to lose the fear of God? In the days of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, many of the Hebrews who claimed that they loved God, they had bowed down to Baal. And these men looked at themselves and said, no, we will not. I will not. And there were three of them. What are you thinking about yourself? When everyone is feeling, you ought to be the one standing. God keeps looking at you. Heaven keeps looking at you. Hallelujah. And in the days of old, in the early church, many ran away to hidings. And the disciples of Jesus Christ will give themselves and will choose to die rather than to hide. Have you loved God? Have you found the love of God? Are you so rich in your eyes? God keeps calling and is asking you to turn back. Pick up your fear. Take up the cross. Hallelujah. I pray for you. Let grace come to your heart again. And where you have found failure, where you have been so hurt by the mistakes of men, even those who preach the gospel, I pray your heart be healed. 
And there are many men who are even angry with God himself. <laughs> I pray that your eyes will be open. Just like these guys who were flocked even though they were doing God's service. I pray that your heart will be so brave in the word of God that you have hid inside. That you will love God irrespective of the judgments of the world system. The boys say whether God will save us or not, we are not bowing down. I pray whether you expected the heart of God and you saw it or not, you wouldn't give up on him. Listen, God holds all power in his mighty hands and knows the end from the beginning. He's the judge of all the earth. His word, his mind, his wisdom cannot be questioned. And this God, as long as you've loved him, if he be for you, who can be against you? God is working for you and with you. I pray that wherever there is that hurt in your heart, let it be healed now that you can rise again to your feet in the name of Jesus. Stand firm. Courage. Do not stumble. Do your part. Be dark as night. Do not be wanting when duty calls. It's only difficult to walk in the fear of God when we lose fellowship. But as I come talking with you, I come with strength. And I pray in the name of Jesus, wherever you find yourself staggering, there is grace to help you. Wherever you find desires interlocking your heart, I pray, Father, in the name of Jesus. This once with the hands lifted up, there is help. Let help come from above to strengthen you out of the weakness, to strengthen you out of the difficulty, to strengthen you out of the anger, to strengthen you out of the guilt. Don't die in your guilt. Get up and begin to walk again in the name of Jesus. Let not the pursuit of money make you lose your fear of God. He wants you to pray. He wants you to study his word. If you do not hide the word in your heart, the fear of God will not be present. How many people are sharing with you? How many of daily devotionals do you bypass on your WhatsApp? And the ones that you read, how many of them remain in your heart? Go back to that place where you can look at the word and hide in your heart. I just discovered that recently it's difficult for believers to hide the word in your heart. How many are still memorizing scripture? Do you think it's waste because we have softwares and gadgets that you can just turn and search? You need it in your heart. You need the word in your heart. Keep your phone aside and ask yourself how many scriptures you can quote to yourself. When there's no one to comfort you, when there's no one to stand with you, how much does the word of God speak? I'm not talking about motivational speaking. I'm talking about that memory of the word that will shut the mouth of the devil when there's no one to encourage you. When everything about you tells you to give up. How much does the word still hide in your heart? Christianity is not a life of struggle when the word of God is hidden in your heart. Because even when you find yourself so weak that you want to decide, you want to make the wrong choice, there is an interlocking word. There is a resounding word that would speak to your own very flesh that has to learn God. And you find yourself walking in the spirit. The fear of God is needed for you to walk with God. I'm waiting for your messages We'll go on a break. When we come back, we are going to look at Psalm 132. Let's talk about David. Let's talk about the importance of the fear of God. We have talked about the meaning, and then we are looking at the importance of the fear of God. I want to show you about the importance of the fear of God for your life, for your wealth and your money, for your legacy, for your nation, and much that covers. So let's go on a break. Please don't forget, copy the number on your screen. I want to hear your prayer requests. I want to hear your contributions and your questions. We will be back and then we are going to continue with Psalm 132. We'll be back. Stay tuned.